That is the first patch Bristol piano on the Kurzweil K2700. We've got the Maltese Falcon in the room. I'm Jack Duxbury. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my first reaction to it. I had about an hour with it last night and a little bit of time with it today. And we're just gonna go through the sounds mainly and maybe ask you some questions at the end, what you wanna see more in further videos. Cause I've got a bit of time with this unit. Let's dive in. Right, that first patch is called Bristol Piano. So it comes with a slight propensity for violence and alcohol. No, it doesn't. And it sounds, <laughs> the old Bristol Piano. Let's hear that. And I'm gonna flick through and check this out. It's called Flash Play. It loads between the sounds so quickly, right? So uh, same little thing I was doing. Beautiful, seamless patch changes and really nice pianos, right? That's called burnished piano. Sizzle piano. like to hear. These are the first seven patches out the gate in program mode. So these are single sounds at a time and you're hearing to me what Kurzweil are good at, right? A little bit about Kurzweil. I'm not even, is Kurzweil or Kurt, Kurtzweil? Kurtzweil? We'll try it. You tell me. But for me, I'm a big Nord enthusiast, right? If I was going out gigging and I always have been. But at the dawn of me, Early young me, about the same age as the whippersnapper falcon over there, there was a choice. There were two roads. And in my brain, I'd set out, I'm either going to be a Kurzweil guy or I'm going to be a Nord guy. Because at the time, uh, turn of the millennium, Kurzweil and Nord, like, Kurzweil were on every stage. Whenever I watched Jules Holland, they were always on there. And um, they seemed to be the thinking man's keyboard. And I can remember, I basically went with Nord because I was a young, brash kid and they were red. That's why I went there in the end. And subsequently, I haven't seen Kurzweil much out in the type of pop stuff I've been doing, pop cover world. And it really got a niche in theatres. And for musical theatre especially. But uh, I'm excited to know, the, the company reached out and we've got this, we're very lucky to have this here. It's one of the few units in the country. And um, I'm going to tell you how I feel about it. That's my bias. I just want you to know that that's my bias against and for Curzel. There's a place in my heart for it, but I've not seen a use for it in my life. So let's see if there is one. One thing I must say in the hour I've spent with it is the action is insane. I don't know how to... Um, Really tasteless shredding for an old, you know, out of shape dude like me is so easy on this. It is, there's a little bit of thud in it. I can't express it. Normally, you know I'm not really interested in actions. Don't care. But this one, I really do. And it feels great. Let's flick through. That's called Steely Dino 77. This is called Barky P. Right, if I hit view on here, the screen is functional. It really, uh, as you see when we get into the multi-zone thing, very clear on here. Again, the thinking man's keyboard is discerning. Imagine if you got everyone turning up with a Nord and a Yamaha and a Korg. I reckon it's time for people to start turning up with a Kurzweil and just be like, whoa, 
There's something fresh about it. There's something clean about it when you get it out of the box as well. I mean, it's incredibly heavy. It's one of the heaviest keyboards we've ever had in here since the Oasis, but reassuringly so. And again, you can feel it, I think, in the action. Something you're digging in to again. Anyway, I'll stop talking. Aged Tolex. And um, there was one I really enjoyed last night, Beck's Retro EP, is it? That... Thinking man's keyboard, discerning man's keyboard, because these patches, check, there's no weird effects going on. There's no weird layers. They're very usable. If I flick through to the organ, we'll show off some of these features here and how they come into play. So I've got the first organ sound. Cool, and what I love is, I don't even have to do nothing. These are already assigned. Variation button for the slow. Really cool, and this does distortion on it as well, so you can get... John Lordy up in here. No faff, no crazy weird delays on there or uh, nonsense like that. Let's go to the strings and this is where I think a lot of people gravitate towards the Kurzweil, uh, especially for the theatre shows. It must be, right? And they can build these up because you can do 16, we'll get there in, in the end with the multi-mode. But there's a place for this still in live gigs. And I was saying to the Falcon, however much a Nord fanboy I am, if I needed to throw the kitchen sink at things or maybe do 16 strict layers or had a musical director or a theatre show director who was very fastidious. Sometimes the Nord, I'm not sure if I could get there because you can only layer on the stage each section twice. So I could have two synth sounds, two piano sounds and that's it. And I love that. I love that limit. I love it all hands on super quick. But here you can get 16 layers. It's a traditional old school workstation, but made new school by omitting a lot of the faff, which I dig about it. Let's hear these strings, and we'll go for a key of... D minor. Thank you, mate. You're feeling that aftertouch in there. Let's flick through some of these. When I hit view, I can see Nashville strings. Tender strings. Let's go for big LA strings. So each one of these programs, I could stack that up 16 times. Pan them, put effects on there. Now that's where it's not all on the front panel. A lot of the deep editing is done on the screen. But 
from what I've seen, it's not too scary, and I can see why pit guys use it. Because like, I don't think they would be there in the kind of throngs of battle if they were deep in the editing screen all the time. I think once you've got it down, that's why I bet they can dial it in for the show, all the different bits they want to do. But let's go to the synth section. And what I love is you can see um, a lot of stuff now. They're trying to make it, oh, you've got the oscillator there, you've got the filter there. This is just really usable tones. So classic saws, let's go. Key, please. F major. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Eighties lead synth. Now, as we go look, check this out, Anna Brass. And when I go back to this, these are often assigned to things, so filter frequency and resonance. Let's go have a little flick round. Like I said, put in the comments what you want to see another time because I have it's very deep in here and I'm not sure, I'm trying to probably cover my own ass here, but I don't know what is in the mind of a Kurzweil person. I'm trying to get inhabit that in this video, which is how can I use it? And so I'm talking very selfishly at the moment, forgive me. And this, uh, this is what it, polybrassy. <laughs> But a bit of reverb on there, a bit of delay. Because I've got a delay and reverb knob there. And by that, I wanted it off. So I love that. Uh, let's check it out. They don't even care. Jump, OBX. Big old jupy. Eighty saw. And we got a massive ribbon controller. Check it out. And that's about all I ever do on ribbon controllers. It's got all these indentate, well, markings on here, so if you're a ribbon and aficionado, personally, I've never found any use for them, but again, I could imagine if you were doing a really posh transition, because pitch is the last thing I want it on, really. But if I was morphing between two patches or uh, all that stuff, maybe this, and it's massive and doesn't stick out too much. I dig it. Let's check it out. Let's do find another one. Funkenstein. Again, probably a bit wet for me. Let's see if these work. There we go. Bucket loads of these. Let's just enough for the programs. We're going to move on to the multis. On to multi mode. Whack multi, and now we can start layering up these programs. But it comes with a bucket load of multis in there, 700 actually, that get you started. I love this one called Grungy 727, and it feels like really lovely and ambient here. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to see what that's made out of, I can hit edit, it's just lit up in blue, and I can see, oh, I've got all of this lovely stuff I'm playing. But then there's some, in the murky depths down here, we've got some things going on. So let's see what happens when I hit that. Drums. And 
and it's even got like an emergency stop button programmed in. And that shows you, I think, again, what I hear from the guys in the pits or very advanced gigs. Say you've got a regular gig, you, like my dad was in the same band for 20 years and he wants to just fastidiously program the life out of it and have, you know, be able to boil an egg with his key and set off CC sequences. This is it. If you're that person that you're like, yeah, but Jack, I'm that guy. I want to go that deep. This is the keyboard for you. So I've got an emergency stop button. Yes. But what I want to do with this is I want to show you how these make multis a bit easier to deal with, right? So if I kick this off, I can start adjusting the volume of everything with these sliders. Drums. So we've just got the drums there. Angry bass. And then this is our sound up here. But I kind of would like that to be a bit shreddier. So if I just cursor across here, and then it's got a great feature, which I wish everyone had, which is if you hit keypad, these become num a numerical keypad. Five, nine, seven, enter. Kick me back in, but now I've got this sound here. And I can fade these back. And now we can shred. A little transpose. Emergency stop. That's the multi mode. I'm just going to flick through some of my other favorite features that I've noticed in about an hour I've had with it. So let's go that direction right now, Falcon. A few more features that I can see that my little brain can cope with. Arpeggiator. Got a short synth sound here. Oh, yeah. If I hit up, I get what I expect. I can latch it. Now, if I go into edit, more, up, you can see this is the whole point of Curzon, right? You go up, up. It, it, on the face of it, it looks almost childly, uh, childlike, very simplistic. But as soon as you go into this edit page, you can find and tweak whatever you want about it in here. Again, let us know what you want to see in further videos, or maybe if I can find some other guys that are Kurzweil ninjas, they can come in and help me. I love that. We've got the ARP. The other cool thing is uh, when we were rocking with this earlier, I realized it's got the greatest transpose button ever. So if you can just play the same pentatonic lick, all I'm doing there is going. It's the dream. I, I reckon you could probably get through the whole gig and just transpose very effectively. But I love that. Again, it's showing you these, they've cut out all the fat, all the fat. And you know, from its, its heritage as being started by Stevie Wonder, like these guys that wanted keyboards on stage. And, and you can see now with the depth in the studio, I dig that. Uh, one other thing is it's got this variation button that I use for the fast slow switch on the Leslie, but let's find uh, something like this tramp amp breed. Uh, variation. That's on every patch. So if I go to broken EP. Nice little AB, and then check this out. If only other keyboards did this, but every fricking patch has a fricking demo in it. Yes. So broken EP, all I gotta do is hit these two, program demo, shebang. But check it out. These are really played in, not uh, MIDI. You can tell that someone was like, oh, there's some poor guy at Curso. He's like, 
All right, patch 78. Let's see what he's done. Deep fuzz. Dig it. So a good way, if you're not comfortable playing new patches that come up, you think, why on earth? You could definitely sit here when you first buy the keyboard. Just listen to all the demos, write down your favorite. And that's a great way, because sometimes I have that. Yeah, I, I do it all the time on camera, where I totally miss the point of a patch. The amount of times some guy that's designed a patch and he must have gone, what is he doing? because I'm just playing my same old shtick. So it's nice to get you out of that. One thing I want to check out before we go is the fact that I'm in this really lucky position at the moment where I'm thinking of taking my Nord stage from the studio and planting it at home with the speakers, with the posh speakers, just so I can show off a bit. No, I find it so immersive. I love those speakers. I did a video on it many moons ago. Anyway, long story short, I'm looking for a new controller. now. This has so much power with the zone splitting with the 16 levels and things like that. How clean the interface is. I love the idea of it controlling my contact instruments and things I do in my laptop. Also, I'm a big fan of a thing called Harmony Engine that I do all the time. And this has got a feature that I think we can show off. Let's go there. Last thing I wanted to show you was that it's got a great feature in having an inbuilt audio interface. And in my dream, in my head, I thought, oh, I could just connect this to my computer with one cable, which worked. Thank you, Kurzweil, you didn't make it hard for me. Didn't need any drivers, so I've got this one USB cable coming out into my Mac. And it shows up as an audio interface. I can get two channels of audio in, two channels of audio out. Next to here, I'll just make point to mention we've got storage. Now, I could use that for samples, or I could use it for updating the machine, or if I was on tour or going to another theatre, you could just make it how you want from a USB stick, love it. Over here, we've got this common all garden microphone going down an XLR cable into the left channel. We've set the input gain on here. You can see that when I talk in, hey, 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 it's showing up in Logic. Now, one thing I keep using a lot recently is a program called Harmony Engine, which needs an audio input into it. So that's what's so great about this. I can just set that up, input one as a side chain, and I can get some vocoded sounds. This doesn't have a vocoder in it, so when you hear the vocoded stuff, that's just coming from the computer. But also with all these zones, imagine that controlling contact instruments or things in main stage as a hybrid setup. You can hear that I've got a... I've got a nice layered sound in here, and now I can just bring in the computer which is gonna be the sound of me vocoding. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, let us know. We learn from the hate. Appreciate it, thank you very much.